Honourable Member for Courtney Alberni. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, I'll be splitting my time, Mr. Speaker, with my honourable colleague and friend from Edmonton Strathcona. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, first, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleague from Timmins, James Bay, for uh, tabling this very important motion today. Uh, this is a motion that's responding to the call of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission to, to move our, our nation on a path of true healing for the crimes of the, of the residential school era and that the House, uh, I will read the motion, Mr. Speaker, A, invite Pope Francis to participate in this journey with Canadians by responding to call to action 58 of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report and issue a former papal apology for the role of the Canadian Catholic Church in the establishment operations and abuses of the residential schools, and B, call upon the Canadian Catholic Church to live up to their moral their moral obligation in the spirit of the 2006 Indian Residential School Settlement Agreement and resume best efforts to raise the full amount of the agreed-upon funds and see to call on the Catholic entities that were involved in the running of the residential schools to make a consistent and sustained effort to turn over relevant documents when called upon by survivors of residential schools, their families, scholars, and working uh, scholars working to understand the full scope of the horrors of the residential school system in the interest of truth and reconciliation. Mr. Speaker, um, this is probably one of the most difficult speeches that I've been ever asked to, to, to deliver. And um, I wasn't reluctant, like my friend and colleague from the Northwest Territories, to rise today and speak on this issue. I, I wasn't sure if it was my place to share the stories of others. Um, especially those that are living with the trauma and the, the survivors of the residential school system. But I've always seen my role as a parliamentarian as giving a voice to my community, and that's why I sought counsel from uh, the, my, my friends and chiefs uh, and elders, my own family in my riding, and they unanimously urged me to rise today, Mr. Speaker, and gave me permission to share their stories with Canadians. And I want to recognize them for their strength and bringing forward this, uh, their message in, in a, such an expedient way. When it comes to the traumas that people experienced in the residential school system, I struggled to find the words to relay the horrors uh, of these events that have been passed on to me. And I'm absolutely floored by the strength, again, uh, and, the, uh, and the, the commitment by these people to, to share their stories, some of them for the first time, to strangers about uh, how they feel about this. But clearly, they've identified this as very important, Mr. Speaker, uh, in their words to me. And, and I'll begin with my own story, Mr. Speaker. In, in my family, um, I, I did uh, witness and not lived uh, the effect of the, the trauma of uh, residential schools and, and uh, the aftermath of it and, uh, and seeing the pain in my own family. And it never truly leaves a person. And as a child who was adopted by a stepfather from the Fraser uh, River Cree Nation, and for years I believed that my father was the eldest of his siblings, but uh, it took years, Mr. Speaker, before I, I realized that my father wasn't the oldest, that he had two older brothers that were lost to the residential school system, um, something that's so painful that in our family we don't talk about it. I learned this from my aunts and uncles, and, uh, and that my grandma lives with this uh, terrible guilt and horror that has affected her, and my, my father, Frank, and his siblings, and especially uh, my grandma, Mabel, have been deeply affected by the loss of, of their, my, his brothers. And so Wayne and Stuart were taken from their mother against their wishes and placed in residential schools in the care of religious orders overseen by the government. The lives of my two uncles were completely destroyed. These are words from my father. They were badly abused in residential schools, and it was impossible for them to find any sense of normal at any level of their lives. And this had an enormous effect on, on the family. And this is why my father agrees that the Pope should apologize for the role the Catholic Church played in residential schools, because he is the head of the Church, Mr. Speaker. Um, he also says it is simply right and the Christian thing to do. It would, be, it would help those affected directly and indirectly to move one step closer to healing and help them find peace. The Government of Canada has apologized and, through Truth and Reconciliation, is facilitating a healing process. It would mean a lot to the survivors and their families to hear an apology from the Church. And, and I'm honoured my father, for the first time, had the strength to share these words with me last night, Mr. Speaker. And I hope that... Uh that I can honour and remember my uncles, Wayne and Stewart all survivors. 
and those who did not survive by telling their stories today in the House. A papal apology is merely one of the 94 recommendations as I identified. However, as everyone in this chamber knows, these re recommendations will ring hollow unless we have the courage to meaningfully follow through on these recommendations. We are inviting the Pope to be part of this journey and apologize, just as he has with the victims of sexual abuse in Ireland. My friend, a good friend and elder, Wally Samuel, said, many survivors would appreciate a sincere apology from the leadership of the church and for the church churches to take responsibility for the effects of residential schools. An apology would help in the process of healing. The legacy of residential schools still, takes, uh, still affects many uh, First Nation people and communities. It affects the present generation of residential school survivors, their children, grandchildren, and families. Residential schools were managed and supervised by the Christian churches, Catholic, United, Anglican churches. Staff were supervised and trained by the churches, and church staff went into communities and took children five years and older from their families and homes. They brought them to a residential school, often miles from their homes. The staff inducted their religious policies and beliefs upon the First Nations children. Children were not allowed to speak their language and were punished when caught not speaking English. The children were in a prison setting with very strict rules. Many were assaulted by staff and put through very devastating experiences. The goal was to beat the Indian out of the child. And he says many survivors would appreciate a sincere apology from leadership of the churches. The churches take responsibility of the effects of residential schools. An apology would help in the process of healing. The residential school is still affecting many First Nation people in the communities, uh, affecting to present generation of residential school survivors, their children, grandchildren, and families. I also heard from my good friend, Grace Frank, who said, my life in Alberni Residential School and Tofino Christi Resident Residential School was living hell. I am a survivor of residential schools. To this day, I still live with the horror of being physically, emotionally, mentally, and sexually abused. I live in a small town where I see my abuser almost every day. I don't understand how this man got away with so many charges and never went to jail. The amount of money I got was a drop in the bucket. A little bit of money and my abuser walks free. I was robbed of my childhood. I was torn from my family, who loved me so much, only to be abused in so many ways. I was forced to learn to speak English. If I didn't, I was strapped and beaten. I carried that abuse with me for most of my life and became an alcoholic to avoid pain. Today, I'm a strong and courageous woman and proud to be First Nation. I'm also proud to know her, Mr. Speaker. I feel an apology from the Pope will help myself and others that suffered so much abuse in residential schools. It is this reason why I dislike church so much an apology from the church, I feel, would make a, long, a world of difference for residential survivors. In the words of House Chief Greg Louie, in the spirit of reconciliation and healing, an apology from the Pope would be so meaningful to acknowledge the wrongs, like being taken away from our families, punished for speaking our language, sexual, physical abuse, and those that died in residential school. This would be the highest church leader apologizing. This would be a new level of reconciliation and healing. And, uh, uh, he was supported by the Tai Hawia, the, the uh, hereditary chief Maquina, in, in these words. And, and Tolokwiat elder Moses Martin wrote to me that the government should strongly support and fund language revitalization so that our people, young and old, can begin to understand what previous generations were saying about our values, our stories uh, that were lost because of this horrible treatment we suffered. With all the impacts of the Indi Indian residential school system, including poor nutrition, neglect, hearing loss from being hit in the head so hard and so often that my eardrums were broken multiple times, isolation from our parents as well as poor nutrition and dental health that has led to serious dental and health issues for myself and so many others, and our health benefits keep getting cut back, our medicines are not covered, I can't get hearing aids, the Pope's apology, as well as, can uh, as well as Canada's, is pretty hollow if they don't remedy the issues their actions created. In my opinion, all uh, Indian residential school medical expenses should be covered for the intergenerational survivors as well. Judith Sayers Innes Cooks, uh, the president of the New Channel Tribal Council, said, there is no doubt that the Catholic Church representatives inflicted physical, mental, and emotional abuse on Indigenous children that attended Catholic-run residential schools. It created ongoing intergenerational trauma and many negative effects on Indigenous communities throughout the country. Many Indigenous people are still going through their trauma and healing from residential schools. As part of that healing, they need to hear apologies from the Catholic Church, just as they needed to hear the apology from the Canadian government. The apology from the government of Canada provided healing to a lot of survivors and their families, but have not been able to find the same healing, having not received an apology from the Catholic Church. 
apologies are a part of true reconciliation and an integral part of moving forward. Indigenous people have been waiting patient, patiently for an apology from the heart because that is where true reconciliation happens, the heart. When the Pope is ready to apologize, Indigenous peoples will be ready to hear it so they can put decades of pain and suffering behind them. We need and hope the, that apology will end soon and years of waiting to come to an end. And Judith concluded with, New Chalmuth people request the Canadian government to ask the Pope to search his heart and find the courage of conviction to make what the Church did wrong right, to publicly recognize the role the Catholic Church played in so many traumas and hurt of Indigenous people, and to bring true reconciliation to Indigenous peoples in the Church. Indigenous peoples have suffered long enough. It is time to end the suffering, and the Pope has that power to do so. It is time to act, and I appreciate her words, Mr. Speaker, and all of those that brought their testimony to me to deliver on the floor of the House of Commons so it's on record. Questions and comments? The Honourable Member for Sarnia Lambton. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker, and I just want to thank my colleague for sharing his personal story of his family with this House. You know, um, as a mother of two non status Metis children, I cannot imagine the pain of having your children taken away and sent to a residential school. And so um, the member from Northwest Territories had indicated that he had mixed feelings when approaching this debate about whether or not forcing the Pope to apologize when the Pope has indicated he didn't want to apologize. You know, he had mixed feelings, but, but in retrospect, he felt that still this would be a healing thing and it would be beneficial. And I'm interested if the member could comment. A member for Courtney Alberni. Mr. Speaker, it's actually a good question, and, and I appreciate the member asking me that because, uh, you know, when I was asked to do this speech, and, and I, I got concerns, and I, you know, when I learned about uh, Recommendation 58, um, of the importance and significance of it, and it didn't take long when I reached out to the elders in our community, to my own father, who would not speak about this issue my whole life, the importance of it. So its significance is clear. These people moved last night and all night. I was getting messages at four in the morning from these elders that were up all night when I asked them just yesterday to give me comments. Uh, clearly, they, this is so important that we have to ask the Pope to do this. It's the right thing. He did this in Ireland. He needs to do this in Canada. He needs to set things straight. 